Hello, this is Reverend James Hutchings and uh, I'm looking forward to what's happening at St Mary Barnes over the next few days. Um, we are just coming to the end of this remembrance season and we now move into a different phase of the church's year as we come to the season of Advent. And you might be able to hear a slightly annoying uh, alarm clock noise in the background at the moment. And uh, uh, I thought I'd play that partly just to remind myself uh, and and everyone in, uh, involved with this about what Advent is all about. I might just turn it off because it will drive me mad. But, yeah. Oh, no, it's still going. Now I'm not going to be able to turn it off. Uh, let's see if I can do that. There. Anyway, it might keep going. Um, during Advent, uh, we have a time of looking forward. We look forward with expectancy to Jesus coming at Christmas time. And uh, the reason I was playing the alarm clock was it's a, an expectancy and something we need to be ready to be awake for. And in the readings that I'll be using in a moment, uh, Jesus talks specifically about that. But it's interesting this year, isn't it? Because Advent will be a little bit different and uh, perhaps there won't be quite the same sense of frenetic consumerism that we can all, myself included, get uh, sucked up into uh, during these um, this period. And we may be able to use this period uh, while we're still in uh, tier two. I think we are. It's just been announced here in London. Um, we'll be able to use that perhaps a bit more helpfully to... Uh, prepare and look forward to what Christmas really means uh, for us. And uh, I'll be getting uh, our Advent candle out uh, next week uh, and our Advent calendars. Uh, but of course, they start with number one, the first, first of December. But Advent Sunday is this Sunday, the 29th of November. Uh, and uh, we'll be using the readings for that in a moment. Um, but looking ahead, lockdown is ending. Uh, and so from Sunday the 6th, uh, our Sunday services will be back in church. They'll be online as well, but they will be back in church, uh, socially distanced and with the restriction on numbers as before. But that's something very much that we're giving thanks for. Uh, and looking further ahead, as we come towards the special carol services and Christmas services, uh, a number of those are going to be uh, ticketed this year. Um, so do have a look out for that information. It's going to be done through Eventbrite bookings free of charge. Um, and there will be a few places left for those who are, are latecomers to these services. But it would be really good if you're able to book ahead uh, for those. We are also going to have a time of singing in the churchyard as well. Look out for that, uh, uh, because that is the one place outdoors where we will be able to all get involved with singing carols. So. That'll be something we're going to be doing uh, at the start of Christmas week uh, at that time. Um, so let's come to the uh, the readings for this week. First of all, to the uh, special prayer, the collect that we have for um, for Advent Sunday, uh, and it's one. It's a particularly lovely prayer that we're given uh, for this particular uh, Sunday, and indeed, it's one that we repeat through all of the uh, Sundays in Advent. So let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And so coming to the readings that we have for this coming Sunday, the first reading is one of St Paul's letters, and it's the letter to the Corinthians. And it's words he gives which we might be able to apply ourselves for this period of waiting for Christmas, but also waiting for the vaccines and the end of uh, Covid to come. St Paul writes, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that's been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you. So you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end 
so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a lovely sense of God strengthening us. And I'm not, uh, of course, uh, likening the um, end of uh, lockdown or the end of uh, the experience of, uh, of, of the pandemic to the coming of the day of Jesus Christ. But there is, in a sense, one of those trial runs that we have in life uh, to see how are we uh, living our lives in preparation for uh, that ultimate coming together with our creator. And then we come to the reading from Mark's gospel. And this is one which is um, all about uh, Jesus talking about uh, what was going to happen in Jerusalem. Uh, he foretold the destruction of the temple, which happened about 40 years after uh, these words. Uh, the Romans destroyed the temple. They destroyed um, and, and, and uh, massacred many Jewish people at that time in AD 70. So Jesus's words, which sound very apocalyptic, are again talking about something in uh, the immediate history then, but again helps us to prepare for that ultimate coming face to face with our creator. And the gospel reading from Mark's gospel ends with him saying, therefore keep awake for you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening or at midnight or a cock crow or at dawn or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. And Jesus says that not uh, because he wants to give us an unpleasant surprise, but because it is by having that sense of readiness in every day of our lives. Indeed, to try and be ready in every moment uh, to be prepared for that encounter with Christ, because that means that uh, we will be uh, living the life of God's kingdom, living out the good news of the gospel here and now, as well as at some time, point in the future. So I pray this may be a really special Advent this year, a little bit different, one where we can really uh, examine ourselves, uh, enjoy getting ready for Christmas, both uh, with our friends and families, if we're able to do that, but also in that sense of expectancy of all that lies ahead for us, knowing that we are strengthened by God, he will be with us and that we may be ready to meet with him, not just in the future, but here and now. Amen.